Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Will. Today I'm going to show you how to make some delicious homemade jam. I'm going to give you a simple guide on how you can do it. Making jam is not complicated in the slightest. You don't need a sugar thermometer. Don't overcomplicate it. It's not necessary. So if you haven't got one, don't stress out. You can make jam without any of that. In my opinion, jam is a great thing to be able to learn. Once you know the basics of how to make some jam, sky's the limit. You can make all the jam in the world if you want. So enough of me talking about jam, let's start making some jam. So when it comes to making jam, you can pick any fruit or any amount of fruit that you want. For instance, strawberries, plums, peaches, pick anything that's in season, that's what I'm trying to say. Pretty straightforward, right? The basic idea is, what I like to do is, every 290 grams of fruit, I add about 50 to 90 grams of sugar. But obviously that will differ from fruit to fruit, on the ripeness, on the bitterness, and all that jazz. But first, we've got to macerate our fruit. So basically, what we're going to do here is, is remove the skin from your fruit, and remove the stone, if it's got stones to be removed, Remove them because you don't want to break a tooth and then cut into small pieces but they don't have to be impossibly small with pears I like to leave them chunky strawberries I just like the quarter of them and so on and so forth then you're going to toss them in only the sugar give it a mix you're going to cover it put in the fridge for a minimum of four hours preferably overnight though very important step what this does is draws the moisture out of the fruit this makes it easier for the sugar to dissolve do not skip very important so what I would recommend is start about 15 to 90 grams of sugar per 290 grams of fruit. Try it, see if it needs a bit more sugar. It's your preference at the end of the day, you're eating the jam. Just know the less sugar you put, the less jammy it's probably going to be. But one thing, just remember, once you cook it, the flavour is definitely going to change, especially when you add other things, for instance like acid. So now once the fruit has been macerating overnight or for 4 hours, how long you did it for, you just pour it into a reasonable sized pan, bring it to the boil over medium height, then add a squeeze of lemon juice or balsamic vinegar or, or any vinegar in that matter. Now this changes the flavour a lot. It really mellows the sweetness but it also activates the natural pectin in the fruit as well. And also if your jam seems a little bit too sweet, you can always add a little bit extra acid to balance it out. That takes me to my next point. Pectin. That's what makes jams set and gel how they do. It's not necessary to add any pectin when it comes to making jam because all fruit contains it, just some have more than others. Just remember that. Anyways, now you're just going to roll the heat to medium, stir it often to make sure it doesn't scorch to the bottom of the pan because that would be absolutely disastrous. And by the way guys, if your jam is a bit too bitter at this moment in time, you can always add a bit more sugar to balance it out. And then you're just going to continue to reduce until it passes a plate test. And what I mean by that is, leave it to sit there for 15 minutes and spoon onto a cold plate. And that is how you check its thickness. If you want a bit thicker than that, just reduce it a bit more until you're happy with it. But like I said before, just make sure you don't burn it because that will be a real shame. And once it's done, pour into your jars of your choosing, then let it cool down to room temperature before putting a layer on it and put it in the fridge. And it'll last in the fridge for up to three to four weeks. And when it comes to serving jam, I Come on, I just like to get some nice toast, sweat some butter in, jam on it. There's no point in being complicated when it comes to jam. Everybody likes it, it works, just keep it simple. If you don't like toast, you can serve it with some yogurt or spray it on some beautiful homemade English muffins. But just let the jam do the talking. Alright guys, that's it. There's a nice simple guide that you can follow along with right away to start making your very own homemade jam. If you've never made jam at home before, I recommend you give it a go. After this video, go check in your fridge or wherever you store your fruit. And if you've got any fruit that's gone past its best, give it a go. Make some jam. Turn that into a jam. It's a great thing to be able to learn. Experiment, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. So if you enjoyed today's video or you learned something, please like this video if you haven't already. that will be really appreciated. Subscribe if you're new. And please don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you don't miss another video. And I'll see you guys next week.